Okay, so they now want me to calculate the relative atomic mass of a sample of copper. They've given me the mass spectrum. Um, so it's relatively straightforward for this. It's going to be 69.17 over 100 times 63 plus 30.83 over 100 times 65. Um, so that one's that one, that one's that one. I would add, do those expressions separately. That gives you 43.5771. This gives you 20.0395. If you add those two numbers up, you get to 63.62. Um, so 63.62 is your answer, because remember they want it to two decimal places. So one coin has a mass of five grams and contains 84% copper, and they want me to find the number of co co copper atoms in uh, one coin. So first of all, uh, you've got your five grams of coin, but only 84% of it is copper. So we find 84% of 5, that gives you 4.20 grams. You then need to find your moles of copper atoms. So moles is going to equal the mass divided by the relative atomic mass. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use the answer from the previous question or you look this up on the periodic table. I'm going to use the um, uh, one on the periodic table. That gives you 0.0. .0 661 mole and then finally you need to times that number by Avogadro's constant uh, which um, is on your data sheet and if you do that you get the answer to 3.98 times 10 to the 22 atoms. Nickel 2 nitrate can be prepared by reacting nickel 2 oxide with dilute sulfuric acid give the equation. Well, nickel 2 means it's 2 plus, so the formula of nickel 2 oxide is going to be NiO. Uh, nitric acid is HNO3. They've given you, Kylie, the formula of nickel nitrate, which is rather lovely of them. Um, and then, of course, you need to know that it's a base plus an acid, so you're going to make water, so plus H2O there. And to balance it up, you need a two there. Right, so this question probably looks a bit scary, but it's actually not that bad. Um, the main thing is just to draw what they tell you to draw. They've given you a nice picture here. So let's draw my atoms on, like so. They told you this is just a double bond. A normal double bond. So I've got a double bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. I'm going to use crosses for the nitrogen electrons. So, and circles for the oxygen electrons, like so. This is just a single, a, a normal single covalent bond. So if I'm using crosses for the nitrogen atoms, electrons, I've got one, two, three. Um, and um, I've got two left over. Can you see that this is a dative covalent bond from the nitrogen to the oxygen? So both of those electrons are coming from nitrogen there. So let's do the rest of my oxygen atoms. So for this oxygen, I've used two there. So I've got uh, another six in, I've got six oxygen electrons in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are my six circles. Remember, oxygen's in group six. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six for oxygen's electrons. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this oxygen's looking a bit dodgy at the moment because it's only got seven electrons. However, notice I've got a minus charge, so I'm going to put a little triangle for that minus charge there. Um, and that's how you do it. Right, so on to question 22. 
uh, and it wants me to find a empirical formula. So we've got chromium, chlorine, hydrogen and oxygen and it's giving me the percentage. So I need to find the moles. So I divide by the relative atomic mass of each one, which of course you can find on your periodic table. And you will get the ratio as follows. Uh, so for chromium 0 0.375, uh, chlorine 1.13, hydrogen is 4.51, and oxygen is 2.25. Divide by the smallest one, which of course is chromium, and you get 1 to 3 to 12 to 6. So you've got chromium and chlorine, so Cl, Cl3. Hopefully you can see that six hydrogens and um, oops, got that. Six hydrogens and uh, sorry, twelve hydrogens and six oxygens is the same as six H two O. Right, back to the right screen. So this is six H two O. So it's um, going to be Cr Cl three dot six H two O as your final answer. Right, so for the next question, it tells me how we carry out uh, the experiment. And you've probably done this experiment as part of uh, your practical component of the course. We've got a crucible, ply punctuate triangle, we're going to heat it up. Uh, it tells me the mass of the crucible and the hydrated salt is 16.84 grams, and the mass of the crucible and the residue after heating is 16.26 grams. And from that, we can work out that the water loss is the difference between those two, which is going to be 0 0.58 grams of water that we've lost. And we're going to need that for the next part of the question. Right, so it wants me to calculate the percentage error in the balance. Now, if we remember uh, a minute ago when we worked out, we used the balance twice. We used it to weigh the crucible with the hydrated salt and we used it to weigh the crucible with the anhydrous salt. So, we need to times this error by 2. So it's 2 times 0 0.005. That's divided by the reading, which we worked out to be 0 0.58 grams, times by 100 to convert it into a percentage, and the percentage error is 1.72%. So just one modification that a student could use to their method to reduce percentage error well, if you want to reduce the percentage error, you, you could make this number bigger, uh, so you would uh, use a larger mass, or you make this number smaller, so you use a balance which measures to three decimal places. And then it says the student's not sure that all the water has been removed. So how we do this? Well, you'd heat it to constant mass. So you would uh, heat it up, let it cool down, weigh it, then heat it up again, weigh it again, and you keep doing that until the mass doesn't change. And once the mass, mass has stopped changing, you know that all the water has been lost. So you heat to constant mass. Right, okay, so uh, part C then. The student prepares a solution of sodium sulfate by adding uh, 6.25 times 10 to minus 2 moles per decimeter cubed of sulfuric acid from a burette to some sodium hydroxide in the conical flask. Calculate the minimum volume of sulfuric acid that I need. Well, if you look up here, I have been given a volume and a concentration of sodium hydroxide. So the first thing to work out are moles of NaOH, which is going to equal concentration times volume over a thousand and if you do that you will get to 3.1 0 times 10 to the minus 3. Right so once I've got that I um, have moles of sodium hydroxide I need to work out uh, how many moles of sulfuric acid is going to react with that. So if you look at the equation, it's a 2 to 1 reaction. So the moles of sulfuric acid is going to be 3.10 to 
times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2, which is 1.55 times 10 to the minus 3. Because for every two of those, you only need one, one subject acid. And finally, volume is equal to mole divided by concentration times by a thousand. So you put your numbers in. Uh, the number of moles is 1.55 times 10 to the minus 3. The concentration they told me up here has been 6.25 times 10 to the minus 2, times it by 1,000, and you will get to the answer of 24.8 centimetres cubed. Right, so then uh, it's also talking about a redox reaction now, um, and it wants me to use oxidation numbers to show which element has been uh, oxidised and which has been reduced. So, I've got elemental aluminium here, the oxidation number of L element is zero. Hydrogen here, well you know hydrogen is plus one. Sulfur here is going to be plus six and oxygen minus two. Aluminium is in group three, so it is going to form plus three. If you notice the sulfate ion hasn't changed, so the sulfate you don't need to work those out, but just in case you're wondering, those are the oxidation numbers there. And hydrogen, of course, as the element is zero. So the element oxidized is aluminium, and it's gone from zero to plus three. The element reduced is hydrogen, and it's gone from plus one to zero. Remember to put your pluses and your minuses, if appropriate, for your oxidation numbers.